Here's the gorgeous fern cabinet. I love the curved top. Looks like they only have the black version in stock at the moment. So, I bought an old cabinet for 20 euros and I'm going to attempt to make it into my own version of the cabinet. So, let's get started. This is the top part and it came with this this one too and I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna use it because when you put them on top of each other it's it's really high and it's obviously not quite the uh, fern cabinet look but it would be nice storage so we will see at the moment it's just sitting on another cabinet I have okay so here's the cabinet and since it's a lot smaller than the actual fern storage cabinet, this is what I'm thinking of doing. Instead of the drawers being inside here, I'm gonna add them here. Like so. And then the legs go here not sure about the legs yet how I'm gonna make them happen but then it won't be so small and it won't take space from inside the cabinet and it will be perhaps a little bit more the size of the fern cabinet first thing I did was take off the doors then I took out the plastic trim that held the glass in place some of the nails were left in, so I took those out, and once the glass was out, I took a handsaw and cut out those decorative middle pieces. I might try and do the drawer fronts from these. They kind of have this fun um, pattern here. Here I'm drawing out the height of the bottom piece and this feels too tall and skinny to me. I just don't like the dimensions. It's a lot better like this. So I also decided I was only going to make one drawer because I've never made drawers before. So that made me a little bit nervous and three drawers seemed like too much of a daunting task. Here I'm just marking where I want to cut to get the bottom part to be the right height. I cut the whole piece in half with this regular saw and it took quite a while. Once the bottom piece was cut in half, I took the sides of the leftover piece because I needed to put the bottom part back. Once I'd made sure that it's level and square, I put glue on and let it dry just to make sure the pieces won't shift when I go in and drill uh, screws in. I drilled some holes and got the screws in. Then I went to the hardware store and got them to cut some plywood in the exact size of the drawer. I also bought the simplest drawer slides I could find because they seemed like the easiest to install. I was nervous about this part and forgot to film assembling the whole thing. So here is where we are at now. I made this. <sighs> the front was not easy to get in the right position, but I did it. And I've already tried this. I've had these knobs for years. I bought them from Spain some year. And I love them, but I haven't had any place to put them in. And I thought I, I wanted to try them here and I think they're gonna be perfect. I've already modeled here where I'd like the um, knobs to be. And I just think it goes with the rug and with the John Singer Sargent painting. These used to be a lot brighter, but they've oxidized or something like that. So I think I like that. Yay! 
Here are the legs. It's they're actually IKEA bed legs that I found from a sec flea market for five euros. So these are the ones I'm thinking of using. And I got these from the flea market as well. They're meant for those legs. And uh, it was, I don't know if these were unused. They, they didn't come in plastic, but this bag was unused. Anyway, I'm gonna have to figure out how to get these mounted on the bottom of the drawer. But at the moment I'm really happy. So we are ready to paint. I've filled in these odd grooves and sanded them down and this is, well, this is not the exact color, but it's gonna be dark, almost black. I'm kind of hoping that the dark here will make the inside wood look a little bit more fresh and um, kind of not as dark and yellow. Maybe, maybe it won't work, but I would prefer if the inside was wood. First, I have to prime. Once I had everything sanded smooth and cleaned well, I put on a coat of water paste primer. I almost never skip this step because no matter what your surface is, the primer will make sure your paint adheres well and doesn't start peeling away. And all my paints are usually water-based. They are just so much nicer to use. They smell a lot less and are easier to clean afterwards. Then it was time for the actual paint. First coat is always gonna look really bad when you're painting dark on a light surface. You just gotta trust the process. I love using these artist brushes. They give such a smooth finish, even if you're not a master painter. And here's the original painting. Um, but I don't think this will be like, I was thinking of leaving the grooves a different color, but here actually I've painted the grooves black, but I don't, that will not happen. I think in real life it would be too busy with everything else going on. So I might go with like black and the grooves, um, just leave the wood tone or or paint them like nice something nice like this more sanding and cleaning now i know this makeover could have been done in a much more efficient way and order however i really wanted to make sure i was going to be happy with all the design color and size choices so that's why i was doing things kind of bit by bit even though it wasn't very efficient and took me longer this way, the most important thing to me was that I was going to be 100% happy with the result. So I've put painter's tape. I cut it with a rotary cutter in these thin strips and I've put it in the grooves. And now I have, I had this lacquer that I'm going to put over them so that the lines would be as crisp as possible. But now I'm just taking this old piece of old rag and going over the tape. This is the hack for, uh, well, I've never tried it, but it's supposed to be the hack for getting crisp lines because the paint or varnish or whatever is the one that bleeds and then the next layers are not going under the tape. It's been an hour and I'm going in with the um, primer. Here we go. I've just finished on putting the second coat on and uh, it's dry to the touch. Well, aside from a few wet spots and I'm gonna try and take the tape out and 
I don't know how it's gonna turn out. I'm not feeling very confident. I know that especially this part is nothing like the fern cabinet. I was inspired by it, but never wanted to try and make an exact copy. Oh my god, the first one is so good! It's it's not perfect perfect, but it's it looks perfect, yeah. If you look really, really close up, you can see a little bit of imperfection. Now I'm just hoping all of them are good. I would like the legs to be a little bit, uh, like not this bulky, but this is what I have. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna lay this and this flat flush with the front because this will still have the uh, drawer front on so I'm hoping this won't show but then here I don't want it I don't want to bring it right here because then from the side you can see it so I'm just gonna maybe five or seven mils put it inwards I'm gonna have to I think carve out like grooves for them because i think that will be easier than cutting this super hard metal yeah man carving into this to mount the hardware i eventually got it done but let's just say that i'm happy you can't see the bottom it wasn't the neatest job i don't even know what this tool is called comment down below if you know I cut out sanding, cleaning and priming this upper cabinet and here I'm just painting it with a foam roller. I put black tape on the legs to see if I want to paint them. She looks more put together and confident with black heels so I think I'm gonna go ahead and paint them and I'm not gonna show you <laughs> until the reveal. Cleaned out the glass, painted the plastic trim, and then it was time to put everything back together. All I have is a stable gun, so I used that, and I think it did a pretty good job. Okay, I got the staples in, and I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. It's not perfect, but I'm gonna paint over them and do some touch-ups. And now what I have left to do is put the hinges back on and I've kept them all here so I have all the screws and everything. This cabinet acts as extra storage so I'm not going to stage it with decorations but here I'm filling it with things we actually use. For a family of five we have a small kitchen and it's really satisfying to get more useful storage. So, what did the fern-inspired cabinet cost me? The cabinet itself was 20 euros. The legs and hardware were 5 each. The knobs from Zara Home I've probably had for 8 or 10 years, but maybe I spent about 10 euros on them. The drawer slides were only 350. The paint was 41 and 30, and I still have a lot of paint left. I wanted to get a smaller can, but this was the smallest they sold for this particular brand. The plywood for the drawer and having them cut it to size was 23 euros and 80 cents. I don't remember how much the wood filler cost me, but to get a nice even number for the whole project, I estimated it to be about 11 euros and 40 cents. That brings the total to 120 euros. But there is a catch. This cabinet is from a Finnish brand that I believe doesn't exist anymore. But I've seen this cabinet sold on Facebook Marketplace, etc. before. Back in the 80s or 90s they used to make them and there were white ones, darker cherry tree colored ones with a little bit varying heights. So I'm pretty confident had I waited I could have found one from my area. I did look for a while but didn't find any. However, I found this one, but it was far away, but close to where my mother-in-law lives. 
She was coming to Helsinki anyway, so I paid for her gas, which was uh, 150 euros. And she was kind enough to squeeze it in her car and bring it here. So that brings my total to 270 euros, which I'm still happy with. And there's another catch. The guy that sold it to me had two identical cabinets and he just wanted to get rid of them. So he said, I can have both of them for 20 euros. But only one fit my mother-in-law's car, so she offered she could keep the other one in her apartment for a while. I couldn't ask her to do it, so I ended up missing out on that deal. Anyway, Anthropology doesn't deliver furniture to Finland and the fern cabinet would not have fit this narrow space anyway. And the fern cabinet costs 2,965 euros on the UK site, so I'm more than happy with my 270 euro cabinet. So what would I do differently? Honestly, I can't think of very many things. What would you do differently? Please comment down below. The legs aren't as cool as the fern ones, that's for sure. But what makes me happy is these legs were second hand. Come summertime, I might take the cabinet outside and sand the inside and bleach the veneer. But I don't hate the old yellow tone either. Do you think I should do that? We have a few marble tiles too. So I could cut them to fit the bottom shelf of the upper cabinet to kind of resemble the fern cabinet. I'd have to do, wait for summer to do that too. I don't have a wet saw. And I don't know if you can see the bottom shelf that much anyway. So I don't know if it's worth the hassle. And finally, I actually have knobs that someone gave me that are the exact same as the fern cabinet. But I like these ones more for now. I can always change them later if I feel like it. What do you think? I'm adding this tassel for decoration. I bought it from a flea market and I've had it for probably 10 years and I still love it. I'm putting this vintage box under the cabinet for even more extra storage. Finally, I'm adding a hanging planter and this plant on top of the cabinet to kind of drape over it. Here is the finished cabinet. with the cabinet and how it turned out. Whenever I'm doing something for the first time, I really want to take my time and re-evaluate my design choices in between steps. I think this is really important even though it takes uh, longer to finish, but oftentimes the image in your head is not 100% accurate to the result. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Here's a video I made about drifting home decor in Spain. Bye!